Today, we're gonna to be going over pressure fermentation. We've talked about it in prior videos, but we're gonna focus on it today. It's really something fairly new for home brewing, and it involves a lot of what professionals have done for a while. Let's start off with you telling me a story about your first professional batch and what you thought was different about it compared to your home brew. I remember a friend telling me it was a commercial brewer saying you're getting your first IPA batch or your first batch in general. You're gonna be like, man, that's just so much better than my home brew. And so it got me to thinking of like, why is that? And you know, we use these large fermenters with, you know, X amount, you know, 10, 20 feet of liquid. So there's, you're creating pressure just naturally, even though, you know, we might not be spunding it at 15 PSI, you know, down and, and we all seen, you know, fermentations, your yeast is kind of making its way through that. So as it cycles through, you know, it is under pressure. So it's just cleaner, taste it better. Um, you know, and, and I always uh, attribute that to, uh, you know, a, a pressure fermentation. Exactly, and, and you know, one of the things you guys do, and I, I do on some batches, especially when using this guy now, is have, uh, instead of an airlock, a traditional airlock, I'm going through a, a bucket and I'm, I used to put only like a half inch of water in there so that I was making no back pressure on that yeast. Now I do three or four inches, if not more, because to go through there, it has to go through the water column, has to pr push harder to come out. And it's a mild form of pressure, mm -hmm. which instantly does good things for your beer. But let's talk about going even further. So there's a bunch of great reasons to consider pressure fermentation. And let's go through those in depth. So the first one is you can generally ferment warmer and get away with things by going warmer. And, and the biggest one that there's lots of documentation on is lagers. People doing lagers at what I would consider ale temps, um, but with back pressure. And they're usually using a fairly high back pressure, one bar um, or you know, 15 PSI type of pressure on there to hold back things and you know the other place I use it quite a bit because I am going warm is Kavec strains and I find it, it helps do a number of great things um, but it's another one I go way up high on the one I haven't experimented with much is doing ales how much warmer can you go I'm not a big proponent of taking an ale strain and bringing it to 90 saying oh it's under pressure and you'll be great but I think you could get away with probably five to ten degrees over what the ideal temp is and probably keep down some of those fusels and esters. Yeah, so speaking of fusels and esters, I mean, there's like, like Chris said, there's some great articles and data out there, um, you know, that, that have been peer reviewed. And if you look at those, yeah, they're at these, these higher uh, pressures, um, the esters, the, the fusel alcohols are all being suppressed even at the higher temperatures. So that's just, you know, gonna lead to a cleaner beer um, you know, like I had mentioned earlier, even at the brewery, you know, I don't know if I would go higher temperature. I think keep it in your same range, um, but you're going to have a cleaner beer overall. If you're trying to speed up your production time, um, that's where I would go a little, little faster, but still be able to have that cleaner ferment um, in that reduced amount of time. Another awesome benefit of fermenting under pressure is the fact that it's going to suppress down your croissant, meaning you can actually fill your fermenter up higher. I, I would still put a little bit of uh, Fomax or whatnot in there to help keep that croissant down, but the back pressure actually reduces it as well, meaning you can do a bigger volume batch in your same fermenter. Yeah, uh, just to, to add to that too, think it, it reminds me of a tasty moment. I remember going through a brewery with him and you know, there's a bunch of yeast in the, the blow off bucket and they're like, it'd be great if that was in solution, right? So like keeping that chrysin down, you're keeping more yeast in solution, which is you know, gonna lead to a better Gotcha, better instead ferment. of it coming out. Exactly, yeah, so another benefit to that as well. So one of the other reasons that a pressure fermentation is, is awesome, especially for IPAs, pale ales, your hoppier beers, right? We want, you know, hops, it's all about the aroma, right? That punchiness of it. So we want to try and keep that in. You know, when you, you added a bunch of dry hops and that's just going right out your blow off and it smells amazing in your brewery, that's cool, but I'd rather those stay inside the beer. So by pressurizing or keeping it, you're keeping a lot of those volatile aroma compounds in liquid. And while you're doing that, 
I consider it a more sanitary process. Meaning, you know, if you're using a little spunding valve like this guy, it's a lot less risk when I'm holding 12 to 15 PSI of any bacteria, anything getting in the beer. A standard airlock can dry out. Um, sometimes you blow out and it goes all over the place. And then that's a, a way that something could get back in, especially ants. I've seen ants going into a fermenter before because mm. it's sugar. Um, so just it's a nice little safety feature to, to guarantee great beer. And then the other one, since we, you know, we're talking about keeping that, that gas in, you know, there's a CO2 shortage right now. Being, being able to keep some of that gas in and have you know, already carbonated beer, um, you, know, you probably have to add a little more, but you've already got a leg up in your carbonation. So you know, being able to, to pre-carbonate, um, you know, and that's, I think traditionally, you know, spunding was you know, lager producers. That's how they did it. And you know, you're ending up with you know, almost you know, halfway carbonated beer that and that's gonna speed up your time mm, as well production time uh, production time or your homebrew time is it's really nice when it's mostly carbonated when you're done um, a unit like this you can actually serve off of I, I probably wouldn't I'd probably transfer it to a keg but it just reduces that amount of time for uh, co2 to go into solution all right so let's go over what you need to do pressure fermentation. We have two very different units at two very different price points, but they both work really well for this. The key things that you need is kind of the things that are at the top of each one of them, which is the true spunding valves, meaning you're setting a back pressure and to be able to hold how much pressure is going in your tank. You know, let's talk about how we set those too, since we, we need the spunding valve. So, you know, without fermentation, we have no gas. So the, the first step is, you know, get your liquid in there, pitch your yeast, right? Then you'll add a little gas through, you know, either one of these ports to set it at, okay, cool. I've got it at 15 PSI. I'm hearing a hiss. I'm seeing the bubbles. So then we know we're locked in at that, you know, whatever, you know, eight to 15 to 12, whatever uh, uh, head pressure we want to set on it. And sometimes you got to use the same one, same port. So I will set this up higher, mm -hmm. meaning hold mm -hmm. as much pressure as it can, then add at least 15 PSI on there, put it on and then back Dial it off. It back, yeah. And then I know, cause then it holds that pressure and I come back an hour later and it's still at that pressure. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. I know I've nailed it on that one. Maybe if it's cooling a little bit, it might contract mm. a little yep, bit. You so you do, if you're gonna spund, you do have to pay attention when you are chilling. Um, if you're coming in a little bit warmer post boil chilling and before, you know, it's, it's found that, that temperature, but that's the beauty of adding pressure to these vessels as well. So let's go over what's the ideal pressure for fermentation. And we've read different studies out there going, you know, a lot of times they use bar, one bar, two bar, blah, blah, blah. Let's dumb it down. Um, let's go practical. Vito, what do you use? So you know, the old rule of thumb, I always like eight to 12 PSI is kind of a safe spot for all yeast strains, um, I think. But there's you know, certain yeast strains that are better at higher, uh, or higher pressures. Um, but so that's a safe spot, you know, five to 15, right in that eight to 12, right in there, kind of keep it, keep it safe range. I was gonna say for ales, I'd probably go in the lower side of that range. And for lagers, I'd probably go in the higher side of that range. But it's, it, you know, explore, look online, see what yeast, can hold pressure, some can, some can't as well as others. Um, you put too much pressure on the wrong yeast, you might stop it from fermentation, fermenting. So you kind of want to visually or check in on it as well. Last thing we need to mention is safety. We are under pressure. Any one of these things, as we take them off, if we're under pressure, will act as a projectile. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure at breweries you've had issues happen. Yeah, yeah. When you're dry hopping, things like that. I mean, it, it's always, you know, pressure is, is something you need to be cognizant of and, and always, you know, make sure depressurize your vessels before you're going to remove anything. And the other thing is make sure what you're using has some safety built in. This conical has both a PRV here and in the spunding assembly. And this one we have a PRV as well as obviously coming out the spunding as well. They also did some safety on the PET to not let too much pressure build up. But when you're disassembling or opening them up, always vent. I've seen some of these explode because people open them under pressure. So you just got to make sure you do that vent. But other than that, it's really safe, 
really easy to do and it's really quite fun mm -hmm. to, to see like, oh my gosh, I, I just saved a little bit of CO2. Some people may say big woo, but like you said, mm -hmm. there's a shortage and it's getting harder and harder to get. So the more we can make our CO2 last, the better. I also feel it's just part of our hobby. It's something new and fun we get to do. And I think it's going to lead to better beer, you know, especially with some of the, the hoppier beers where we want to capture in that aroma, um, you know, and, and a cleaner beer is always better as well. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let us know how you like this video in the comments. See you next time.